Using a tempo track and saving your tempo track with each one of your live sets will allow you to quickly build a live set with multiple tempos. In fact, last week I showed you how to do that. We're continuing our three part series today where I'm trying to answer some of the most common questions I get. Today's question is kind of on the heels of last week. Okay, well, I can use a tempo track, that's great, but what do I do when my song has a tempo change? Well, I wanna show you, it's super easy to manage and we can still follow the same exact process. So I've got a song pulled up. This song has a tempo change. In fact, if you look down here uh, in Live's master tempo track, you can see the song's at 72, goes down to 63, uh, stays there, and then goes up to 78. So pretty crazy kind of tempo change. Um, now, within this song, and really this is the only thing you need to manage this and make this happen, is you've got to have a recorded or rendered click track that goes with your song. So let's dive into this song. If I open up my stems folder here, you see I have a click track uh, uh, file. Um, and within this click track track, I have a click track stem, okay? Uh, and it's a audio clip and you can see that my tempo track or my tempo changes have been recorded into this. Now, uh, if for some reason your file doesn't have a click that has the tempo changes rendered uh, into it, let me show you how to do that. It's really, really simple. So uh, I am using Foundations for Live, which is included in my advanced uh, tracks template. You can also purchase it. Uh, it's in the basic track template as well. You could also purchase it from studio to stage. I'll link all that up in the description. I'm using that as my click, which is a MIDI click, and I've talked before about why I use that. But here's what I've done temporarily for the sake of this file. So I've gone in, turned off all my eighth notes, all my 16th notes, and I've just turned on quarter notes and my accent. Uh, and here's my tempo change that's already programmed in. What I'm going to do is uh, I'm going to solo my click track here, and I want to render out just that click track. So I'm going to do Command L to make sure that's set to loop. We'll do Command Shift R to do render. Uh, and I've got this set up to render out the master and I just need a WAV file here, so I've turned that on. And now let's uh, let's export this out. So we'll do this a second time. We'll say this is stems, click two. And now this is going to render out. So essentially what we're doing is we're playing back this song. We're just gonna hear the click and we're rendering the click out. The click is gonna follow those uh, tempo changes that we had in our song. Um, and we're gonna end up with an audio file that is a click track, but it has those tempo changes programmed in. And I'll show you how quick and easy it is to use this in another set. Okay, so we're almost done rendering. Let this go just a second longer. Okay, great. Uh, now I'm gonna turn off loop and I'm going to unsolo my click so I don't forget. And then I'm gonna expand my stems here. So I already dragged in my click so that uh, beforehand, but I'm gonna delete this really quickly here. I'm gonna go to my desktop. You can see stems click two. We're just gonna drop that right into our set. If we double click on this, we look at this, it's not warped. So let's click warp to warp it. And as soon as I do that, you'll see all this tempo automation was programmed in. Now we're still going to use a tempo track to save our tempo, but this time, instead of using our tempo track up here, just at 72 BPM, we're going to make our click our tempo track. And here's how we do that. We're gonna drag this up. Okay, we're gonna drop this in our tempo track, okay? Uh, if you uh, rendered this with the click uh, enabled and uh, to where you could hear it, then you could disable that so that you, uh, don't ex you don't actually hear it. And there's our tempo automation that's programmed into this. Now I'm gonna go down here, click from uh, follower to leader because I want that tempo track to set my tempo. Now let's hit save. Now let's do what we did before. We're gonna go back to our five minute set here. And let's build a two song set. So we don't wanna spend a lot of time on this. So we'll take this song, we'll drop it in just like we did in our previous video, follow the same exact process here. We'll move these files up here, cut this, boom, we'll paste, delete this guy. Okay, so this song is in place. It's perfectly fine, just like we wanted. Okay, and let's set this just like we want it. Now for song two, let's use that stems song that we used. We're gonna drop this in. And you can see how quickly I'm able to drag and drop songs in. That, I'm doing that because I'm using my free template that I have available from studiosage.com slash template. And I've formatted all of my songs exactly the same way. I've used a tempo track. And in the case of this particular song, I'm using my click track with my time signature, my tempo changes as my tempo track. Now let's keep going here. Let's close this up. Let's move this song, uh, second song here into place. Uh, so let's cut all of this, okay. We'll paste it and we'll cut this and then we'll do this. Okay, so now we've got two songs loaded in. Let's delete these locators just to clean this up a little. 
Okay, then let's close our browser. So there's song one, there's song two. You see song two starts at 72 BPM, but I want you to notice, look down here. Let's open up our master track. Let's show our automation and let's look at our song tempo. And you'll see that that tempo change that we had in our song before has been carried over to this song. The reason it's been carried over is because of that tempo track that's up here. Now, what's great about this is if I play this just for a second with my click on, uh, let's play and let's turn our stems off just so we don't get uh, uh, dinged for copyright issues. If I play this going right here, I want you to listen to Foundations that's playing right now and you'll see it slow down. You'll see our tempo slow down there. Bridge. I'll let it go all the way down to, I think, what, 65? Oh, no, we went lower than that, 63. There we go. Stay steady. And then let's go back up. Okay, so we're going to jump ahead here in a second. We'll Break see it down. go from 63, I think, up to 78. And the reason it's reading all this is because that information is programmed into the click track, which is great. So we'll see it jump back up to... 78, there we go, we stay solid uh, for the rest of the song. So what's great about this is I've done that work once, even with the tempo change in my song, any live set that I bring that into, uh, that tempo change is going to stay with it. Again, if you want to um, do this in a way that's flexible and not have to redo this, head to fromstudiostage.com slash template, download my free template. Now, what do we do if we have time signature changes? How do we have multiple songs with different time signatures uh, in one live set? And what do we do if we have time signature changes within a song? We'll talk about how to handle that next week. But in order to see that, you've got to subscribe to the channel and enable the bell icon. So click that, you'll see it go live next week, and I'll see you there. Thanks so much for watching this one. We'll see you on the next one. Bye, everybody.